Hello and welcome to our third opinionated video. In this one, we're going to look at the so-called burqa ban and the arguments for and against it, as well as looking into what you said in our opinionated survey. Burqa bans are actually bans on face coverings more generally, which could also include the hijab and the niqab. For those of you who are not well versed in Islamic dress, it's worth explaining the difference between the hijab, burqa and niqab. The hijab is typically a headscarf that covers the head and neck but leaves the face clear. The niqab is a veil for the face which leaves an opening for the eyes. And the burqa, the most concealing veil, completely covers the face and body, often leaving just a mesh around the eyes to see through. The banning of face coverings such as the burqa and the niqab, or the burqa ban, has been a talking point since it was introduced in France and Belgium in 2011. In France, you'll pay a 150 euro fine, and in Belgium, you could face a fine of up to 1,400 euros and seven days in jail. Since then, it's actually been introduced in parts of Spain and Italy, and even a region of Switzerland, with a fine of up to 9,200 euros. The Netherlands also has a burqa ban, but it applies only in public spaces, like schools, hospitals, and public transport. Perhaps surprisingly, large parts of Western Africa have also introduced a burqa ban, despite the Muslim majority population, and that's because of the rise of Boko Haram. But this is because full face and body coverings are seen as a security threat, and burqas aren't part of African Islamic culture, particularly because the burqa isn't actually mentioned in Islamic scripture. While the Quran encourages all Muslims, both male and female, to dress modestly, there's nothing in there that describes the burqa specifically. In fact, the burqa actually originated in Persia in the 10th century, as a way for Muslim men to hide their wives away from the eyes of other men. Because it's not actually mentioned in Islamic scripture, most strands of Islam don't actually say anything about the burqa, although Wahhabism, probably the most conservative school of Islamic thought, does mandate that women wear the burqa. While there hasn't been a ban in the UK, it's popular among a majority of UK citizens, According to a YouGov poll from 2016, 57% support a ban, and only 25% oppose it. And Jack Straw, when he was the Justice Minister, thought that community relations would actually improve if Muslim women ditched the burqas. That being said, the same fraction, 57% of TLDR survey respondents, were against the ban, and interestingly, the current UK Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has actually come out against the ban. In his now infamous column where he likened Muslim women wearing face veils to letterboxes, he actually made a liberal defence of the burqa, arguing that it wasn't for the state to tell women what to wear. Although he did go on to say that it was ridiculous that people chose to wear them. So anyway, let's run through the core arguments, and let's start with some of the arguments in favour of a burqa ban. So the most obvious argument is that burqas and face coverings are generally a security threat. This has been the main motivation behind the burqa bans across Western Africa, and it's the same reason that the burqa ban debate always kicks off in the aftermath of an Islamic terrorist attack. The idea is that face coverings allow criminals, or anyone who poses a security threat, to evade identification and capture, which means that it's easier for them to carry out whatever they're trying to do and also evade capture. To this end, the burqa is the same as the balaclava. This is the rationale behind the ban in the Netherlands, for example which is why it only applies to public places. Interestingly, most TLDR viewers felt this wasn't the case, with only 19% of survey respondents saying that the burqa makes them feel unsafe. Another common argument for the burqa ban is that burqas and face coverings more generally are incompatible with British or Western values. The argument runs something like this. In Western culture, we're used to communicating via face-to-face -face contact, so, if your face is covered, you'll struggle to form relationships and integrate into society. Some people point out that the only school of Islam that actually mandates that women wear the burqas is Wahhabism. Given that Wahhabism explicitly advocates hostility towards non-Wahhabis, it seems pretty incompatible not just with Western culture, but any other culture for that matter. So, according to proponents of this argument, given that burqas are symptomatic of Wahhabism, they should be banned. Anyway, while only 16% of TLDR survey respondents thought that those who wear burqas can't integrate into British society, a majority of 61% thought that it was nonetheless harder for Muslim women who wear face veils to integrate into British society. This argument does beg the question of what exactly is meant by British or Western culture, but that's a whole other video in itself. 
So another argument that's actually related to the last one is that the burqa is actually a means for oppressing women. Unlike the last two arguments, this is fundamentally about the well-being of Muslim women, as opposed to the well-being of those around them. This argument maintains that it's impossible to disentangle the burqa from its cultural context. As we mentioned earlier, the burqa isn't actually explicitly mentioned in the Quran. So to some, it's not just another bit of religious self-expression. The burqa's original purpose was to hide women, considered the property of men, from the prying eyes of other men. As we mentioned before, it's only mandated by Wahhabism, which has some pretty appalling things to say about women. For example, according to traditional Wahhabist doctrine, women can't travel or work outside the home without their husband's permission. Sexual intercourse outside of wedlock is punishable by beheading, but only for women, because men are allowed to keep and sleep with female slaves. And women aren't considered competent enough to have professional jobs or drive cars. On top of that, burqas were actually a policy of the Taliban when they had control over Afghanistan. Basically, the point here is that burqas have historically been used by Muslim men to exercise control over women and reinforce their inferiority by reducing them to faceless property. So, while some women today might claim that they wear them freely, the practice is to some still fundamentally sexist, and if we aspire to an equal society, therefore we should ban it. This is actually something the majority of TLDR viewers agreed with. 52% said the burqa was used to oppress women, including 40% of those who also said they opposed banning them. Alright, so those are basically the three arguments for the burqa ban. It oppresses women, it's incompatible with Western culture, and it might be perceived as a security threat. So, what are the arguments against the ban? Well, perhaps the most obvious and pervasive one is the classic liberal argument, the same argument that Boris made in his now infamous letterbox column. Put simply, people should be allowed to wear whatever they want. If people choose to wear the burqa, why not? The state doesn't have any right to tell us what we can and can't wear, and laws that do dictate that sort of thing are essentially authoritarian. Even if the burqa has been historically associated with the oppression of women, we already have laws against domestic abuse and gender discrimination. So if some people choose to wear it, they should be allowed to, regardless of cultural connotations. It's worth noting here though, that the state does sometimes tell us what we can and can't wear. For example, it is illegal to go out naked in the streets. A similar argument that also focuses on the limits of state intervention is the argument that religious beliefs and religious self-expression should be protected from law. According to this argument, the burqa is a religious article, and religious beliefs can't be restricted by the state. This is something the majority of TLDR respondents agreed with, with 64% saying that they believe that religious people should be allowed to express themselves however they wish, and 52% saying that they think that the burqa is a form of religious self-expression. Some people point to other religions that also have similar things. Sikhs wear turbans, and some Catholics wear a veil called the mantilla. But it's a bit of a false equivalence, given that neither turbans nor mantillas actually cover the face. But what about the stereotypical fashionable French lady, wearing a big scarf and beanie in winter? You can only see their eyes, so what's the difference between them and the illegal women wearing the niqab? Does this mean that they should also be arrested and fined? Or what about clowns who wear makeup to cover their identity? The point is that there's no clear line, so any law banning face coverings is going to be difficult to enforce consistently. The final argument is a purely pragmatic argument, that any burqa ban would legitimise and worsen anti-Muslim sentiment. It's pretty clear that when you look at polling or politics across Europe and the US, there's already a fair bit of anti-Islamic feeling out there. And assuming you want everyone to live happily together, if a ban is going to make that worse, you've got to be against the ban. That being said, Jack Straw might be right. It's possible that a ban would actually have the reverse effect, and could improve community relations with Muslims. Maybe non-Muslims would feel more comfortable if Muslims wore more traditionally Western clothing. But equally, why do non-Muslims have the right to impose this on Muslims? So those are the four arguments against the ban. People should be able to wear whatever they want, religious expression should be protected from state infringement, it's difficult to enforce, and it might worsen anti-Muslim sentiment. Before we wrap up, let's take a closer look at those survey respondents. Looking through the results of the survey, I think it's pretty interesting to note that the religions people identified as didn't seem to make a huge difference to their feelings on the ban. 
Muslims were slightly more likely to be against the ban, Christians were slightly more likely to be in favour, and atheists slightly more against. But none of the groups showed a major difference from each other. Something you often hear about minority groups, whether in relation to same-sex marriage, trans rights, or burqa bans, is that if you know someone in the minority, you're more likely to support the cause. That doesn't seem to really be a factor here. Of those who support the ban, 32% say they also know someone who wears a face covering, while 34.6% of those against the ban also know someone who personally wears a face covering. There does seem to be a big difference when it comes to people's feelings on Islam more generally. Of those who oppose the ban, 40% are ambivalent about Islam, and 44% have positive feelings about Islam. Looking at the other side, 32% of those who support the ban are ambivalent, and 50% have negative feelings about Islam more generally. We then gave everyone seven major arguments about the burqa ban, and asked them which they agreed with. The yellow bars represent the percentage of approval from burqa ban supporters, and the orange bars represent the percentage of approval from those who oppose the ban. Face coverings make it harder for people to integrate. Face coverings are a way to oppress women. Face coverings make me feel unsafe. Face coverings make it impossible for people to integrate. Face coverings represent militant Islam. People should be allowed to express themselves in any way they want. Face coverings are merely a statement of self-expression. What do you think though? Do you agree with these arguments? Comment below to let us know. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with the latest episodes of Opinionated. Also, by hitting the bell icon, you make sure that you get notified every time we release a video. And if you want more from us, you can find us across social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name listed at the end of the videos, just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.